I'm Michael Peters, sports editor of the Tulsa World, sitting alongside Dave Sittler, columnist of the Tulsa World, and welcome to Sports Extra On Demand. It's another busy week this week, Dave, and as always, it seems like every week for the last year, it's still, despite all the football that's going on, it's dominated it's still by some realignment talk, and I don't know, I'm kind of confused. I don't know if I can even go through all the scenarios. I think, you know, I even saw somebody on Twitter today who was breaking down the Pac-16 schedule for next year, <laughs> so we've even gotten that far along. So what do you make of the latest? I mean, I guess the latest today is that, uh, you know, it seems like Oklahoma, they're somewhat set on the... Um, Pac-12, Pac-14 or 16, Texas still kind of taking offers. Perhaps they're going to go ACC. Maybe they're just doing it for posturing sake. What do you make of all of this from this week? Well, yeah, first of all, it's really disappointing that it's it's flown over into football season. You'd hope that was something we could write about in the summer and get rid of it. And it's really dominated things and kind of, to me, spoiled the early season. Uh, but like you said, I think OU has made up their mind. They're, they want to go to the Pac-14 uh, if te Texas doesn't go. But like I talked to Coach Switzer the other day, and I agree with him that wherever Texas goes, OU should go. Now, a lot of OU fans don't want to hear that uh, because they want to stand on their own. But I think that both Oklahoma schools are going west. And if Texas is posturing, I, I don't get it with the ACC, Michael. I don't. I don't see how that works. I don't know, and it seems odd to me, but I, but there is no sense anymore. Money is the, <laughs> yeah. money is the yeah. only sense that any of it makes. And I, I, the interesting column with Coach Switzer, and I agree with him too since he kind of echoed what I said in a blog post earlier <laughs> uh, in, you know, a couple of weeks ago about how you know Texas recruiting is really important. And so I guess the question is, is this like going to be a $25 million mistake for the Oklahoma schools if they go uh, – out west by themselves. Well, I don't know if it'd be that big, I, but I would think they would take that into consideration. How much? What the payment would be? Uh, what kind of interests me is uh, President Bourne, the president of OU, seems very enamored with the academic side of things, and OU's a good academic school, but OU's never going to be Stanford. They're never going to be considered like Cal. So, I would wish he would listen more to Bob Stoops, Joe Castiglione. You know, I, I was told, Michael, that nobody in the athletic department at A&M wanted to leave the Big 12, and I think it's the same way in OU's athletic department. But we have people, presidents and board of regents, making decisions that I don't think they should be making. Well, and it, it is interesting to that. I read a lot about the A&M situation. I myself, not a big supporter of the uh, SEC, just did not quite think it was necessarily the, the right fit or the right decision. I wish they had tried to find a way to make the Big 12 work and kind of use that power to influence Texas up front rather than try to chase them, you know, chase away to the SEC yeah. and leave Texas where they were. But I will have to say that I, as an alumni of one of the universities that's leaving, I happen to agree with uh, President Bourne. I would rather my university be associated with Stanford or Cal or UCLA or USC rather than um, some of the schools in the SEC, not to kind of throw stones, but there is some still an Old South mentality, some in the SEC, and I would worry about that in terms of recruiting, in terms of having my school associated with that. But now, you know, realignment, I, I'm, unfortunately, I think it's going to be a topic we'll discuss next week and maybe yeah. even the couple of weeks after. The big thing this week, it's got everybody I've read, the you know Orlando Sentinel calling it the biggest non-Florida Miami game perhaps in the history of Florida State, <laughs> the biggest non-conference game in the Bob Stoops era at Oklahoma, game day, prime time. What do you make of Oklahoma, Florida State Saturday night on ABC? Well, in the uh, award-winning football section that you edited and put out, I, I predicted that Florida State was going to be in the national championship game against Alabama. So obviously I, think, I thought then they were going to beat OU. And I'm not going to change my mind, Michael, because I've seen this happen too much to OU on the road. Landry Jones has got to prove to me that he can win big on the road. He's four and five in, that, in true road games, not neutral side, true road games. And, if the, and I don't think anybody knows how good Nebraska, uh, Nebraska OU's defense is at this point. Uh, there's no question they're missing those linebackers, Box and Lewis. And... Uh, I asked Coach uh, Stoops at the press conference Tuesday, have they cleaned up the problems in the secondary? Uh, you know, Harris gets beat twice by TU, burned badly. And instead of answering the question, he said he praised all the other plays he made. So uh, 
to me, uh, that's, the atmosphere is going to be incredible. And yeah, uh, OU has been in a lot of big atmosphere games. But Connecticut in the Fiesta Bowl, I mean, they might as well have been playing Houston you know, or something like that. Uh, that's, that wasn't a test to me. So um, I'm, I would love to see Landry Jones prove me wrong, but he's got to do it first. Yeah, I find it interesting. I mean, just as a, kind of an outside observer, you watched last year's game and last year's game. I mean, Oklahoma just kind of mm -hmm. thoroughly whipped them. I've seen a little bit. I mean, Florida State has Charleston Southern, which right, they beat right. them by 10 less points in Central Florida, beaten beaten the week before. I saw E.J. Manuel. We wrote a nice uh, feature story on him earlier this week in the paper. Charlie Ward, who's now high school coaching back in my, my stomping grounds in Houston said a lot of nice things about him. I saw him against Louisiana Monroe, and early on he's making some throws over people's heads, kind of, you know, way off. Do you really think that the road part of this game is such a factor that it can turn around, like, you know, a 30-point game from the year before? Well, I've seen it happen before to OU. I mean, they've lost at Texas Tech sometimes when there's no way they should have lost. They've lost at your alma mater a and a couple of times. They shouldn't have lost. So it's not all on Landry Jones. It's on Coach Stoops and the staff. I mean, you got to you got to face facts here, and they have struggled lately on the road. But when I was talking to Coach Switzer, he uh, said he couldn't believe that OU was only favored by three or four points. He he said he's watched Florida State both games, and he thinks OU ought to be favored by at least 14. Now, that's easy to say when you're not coaching anymore. I asked Coach Stoops if he agreed with that, and he just kind of shook his head. Right. I think that's funny, which is why Coach Switcher is so good about it, because he can yeah. sort of uh, throw that out there. And so I, I, what, I guess take us into it. You're going to get a chance to sit there and watch it on Saturday night live and in person. What is it like? being around these kind of games for like the Oklahoma players, the coaches. I mean, you have sat down next to Coach Stoops as much as anybody has. What is his mindset for these type of uh, football game? Uh, first of all, I, I, I've been to that stadium once, but it, I only went there to uh, the week that OU played Florida State for the national championship in 2000. And so I haven't seen the stadium full, but it's a very impressive facility. And I mean, they called him Big Game Bob for a reason early on. Uh, he does coach well in those in the past in those circumstances. Uh, I think he the way he talked about it Tuesday when they're asking about that Big Game Bob uh, image, you can tell it's it's it grates on him a little bit privately. He doesn't like it, but uh, he always just wants to talk about the Big 12 titles they won, which is good. Uh, I think it, it's incumbent on him to have that team prepared to go in there because he's been there. I mean, in those, well, he's been there and lost twice when he's a Florida assistant. But uh, it's, a great, it's great as a sports writer to be in those settings. Wish it was in the afternoon. Deadlines really stink. But uh, I, I look forward to it. It's, I mean, I love college football, and this is why. You know, they say players go to schools like OU because of games like this. Well, sports writers work for papers like the Tulsa World because they want to go to games like this. Right, I thought it was interesting today, We talked. To, you talked a little bit in your column today about scheduling and it seems to me that, I mean, this is what you play these games because of this. You don't duck people, that when you duck people then you get to the end of the year and people are asking, well, why did I fall, you know, a ranking mm -hmm. point short of going into the, you know, BCS title game? It's because of games like this. These are the kind of games that propel you there and especially, too, considering, like for Florida State, it could be a program maker game. Yep. This is a program that struggled. You know, Coach Bowden had a great run and then kind of fell off in the last several years, you know, passed it over to Jimbo Fisher. And now it's one of those issues where this could be a real, you know, reestablishing the program game for them. Or if not, if Oklahoma wins, Oklahoma's in the driver's seat for the national championship Absolutely. for the entire rest of the year. And so it makes a big difference that way. You talk about deadlines. Yeah. I'm going to guess that you're probably <laughs> glad that you're not going to be at Chapman Stadium yeah. for the late, late show on uh, Saturday night. Uh, <laughs> 9 o'clock kickoff, move for television. You know, people complaining about going to the Pac-12. They don't even have to go to the Pac-12. It's already yeah. here outside in, in downtown, outside downtown Tulsa this weekend. And I guess talk a little bit about, um, I guess, first of all, just your thoughts on, you know, I guess maybe somewhat of what the television, you know, how it's a driving force, especially when you can have a game like this in a central time zone. They're going to play at 9 o'clock so they can open themselves up to a few more, you know, uh -huh. 100,000 households, uh, you know, in some places that are showing Major League Baseball. What do you think about that decision? In the, in the uh, four 
plus decades that I've covered college football, to me, the worst thing that has happened from a media standpoint is television's influence. I, I mean, they would, they would play this game at 3 in the morning if they asked them to. And that really, I, I think it's unfair to the fans. Uh, I know they haven't sold out as we're talking right now, and I don't know if that late start is because of that. Uh, I've heard plenty of different reasons. But I wish, and, and OU fans better get used to these late starts like that, because if they're playing in California at 7 o'clock against UCLA, it's going to be 9 o'clock here. So uh, television drives football too much, but we've all seen that schools don't care where they go as a conference. They don't care who they play as long as they make the money. And, and talking about uh, OU scheduling, you've got to give Bob Stoops credit for that. He has tried to schedule games that are going to help him down the way, but if they lose this game, I don't see any way they get back to number one, and I'm not sure they can get back to number two in the BCS rankings. No, I agree with that with Oklahoma now. I would have to say, just strictly for recreational purposes only, <laughs> you know, I know when we do the picks on the right. on the board, the line Oklahoma State and Tulsa, I think it opened at 11 and a half. It's moved up to 14. I'd be tempted to take every dime that I owned and uh, take it on Oklahoma State and let Tulsa have the two touchdowns. Is there any reason? I mean, I know it's a bit of a trap game. They have A&M coming up you know, next week in their uh, conference opener. Is there any reason that you think that this game could be closer than the Oklahoma-Tulsa game was a couple of weeks ago than people expect here? Only if uh, Brandon Whedon turns pro early. No, I've, I've seen uh, OSU play some, I mean, TU play OSU some great games when it was Skelly Stadium. When they shouldn't have won, they did win. But this isn't going to be one of those times. I was I covered uh, the OSU Arizona game last Thursday, and I was very impressed the first time I saw them. I think if TU wouldn't have lost to Maris Johnson, I would have given them a chance to keep it close for a while. But no, I, I would uh, bet everything I had too if I really had the courage to do it on the Cowboys. But then once they get, you know, what Bill Blankenship said before the season was right, they needed to win that. Tulane game more than any and I thought they looked good in that game and that'll set them up for what's important to them and that's Conference USA. Well, that's all we have time for this week. Join us again next week for another edition of Sports Extra On Demand.